All right, guys, I wanted to talk about this house today as not a lot of people talk about them. In fact, I don't hear much about Juliet Has a Gun. How do they stay around in business? Who buys their fragrances? Are you a fan of Juliet Has a Gun? So today I thought, let's highlight their fragrances. Let's do a top five. Uh, I'm doing a top five, but I'm going to throw in two more as I have seven total fragrances. And of course, an eighth one that is a tie with one of the fragrances as it's a flanker of the original. So top five Juliet Has a Gun fragrances. I have a discount code to Twisted Lily if you're willing to uh, check out some of these fragrances in either buying samples or uh, full bottles. So all of that uh, coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. That's right, today it's all about Juliet Has a Gun uh, fragrances. Now, if you are a man, does this name Juliet Has a Gun kind of turn you off? Do you think this brand kind of leans feminine? Um, but if you are a man and you are a fan of this house, let me know. Put some comments down so I can find out and let me know what your favorite fragrances are. And of course, if you're a, a woman, let me know if you're a fan of this house as well and which fragrances you have and like and enjoy. So today, as I said, I am doing a, a top five list with two additional fragrances and obviously one of them I have two fragrances of as a flanker. And they are ranked. I'm ranking them from my least favorite to my most favorite. And I'll get to the fragrances uh, soon. But before before we do that, if this is your first time tuning into my channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. Yeah, so let me know if you are uh, a man and you think this uh, house leans a feminine or what do you think about the house, of course. Um, I've been a fan of their fragrances and I like their whole minimalistic aesthetic. They're kind of quirky, uh, you know, kind of identity. They do kind of funky things with their ads and things like that. And the brand is uh, run by um, Romano Ricci, who is related to Nina Ricci. So this is his own brand. And he does the perfumes for a lot of the fragrances. I don't have names of all the perfumers of these fragrances. Most likely he created them. Uh, because these are more of the modern, uh, more recent fragrances. So let me tell you a little bit about the prices. As I said, they are about $135 for a 100 ml bottle. So it's not too expensive. In fact, if you compare them to Tom Ford's signature lineup of fragrances, they're definitely less expensive, right? Because Tom Ford's signature line can go up to close to $200 for a 100 ml bottle. So, so these are less expensive. Plus, there's a few that are a little more higher priced. There's one fragrance on the list that is $145 as 100 ml because it is actually a flanker of one, which I don't have the original or an extreme version of uh, one. And then there's also Super Dose, which is uh, um, not a perfume Super Dose, which is actually $150, so $15 more than the original price of $135. But in general, their general lineup of fragrances are $135. And as I said, I have a, a discount code to Twisted Lily. It's Perfume Guy 10 if you're curious to check out their fragrances there. I do have a link in the info box. So why don't we go ahead and get started? And I'm going to go ahead and get started with the first one at number seven. As I said, this is a top five, but I'm throwing in two more because I have a total of seven uh, to add to this list. This is Lipstick Fever, a recent fragrance that actually did a video about in a lipstick fragrances video. So in the end, this does smell like lipstick. Uh, to me, it does, but it smells like a fruity take on lipstick. And if you're a man and you're used to something like Diorum Parfum or Diorum Intense and you like that lipsticky smell there, this won't smell like that at all. Maybe you'll have the little bit of the the iris, uh, well, not a little bit, a lot, because this one features lots of iris, which uh, Diorum uh, line of fragrance is all about iris, the original line. Uh, but it goes into that raspberry direction. Lots of raspberry here in contrast with the iris. There's woody touches of cedar, there's some vanilla, there's some patchouli and violet. You know, it's a great scent. Um, in fact, I like the fruitiness of it and I like the, I like the fruitiness how it contrasts with the, the powdery iris touch. For me, to me, it doesn't really smell like too much of a lipstick. Uh, 
Uh, unless, perhaps, I don't wear lipstick, obviously, so I don't really know how, uh, if the, there is such a thing, but uh, unless there is such a thing as a fruity lipstick, like if, if there are lipsticks that you can buy that are flavored with fruit. So to me, it just is a fruity take on a lipstick smell, but in the end, it's, uh, there's, you know, it has lots of woody touches and lots of powdery iris touches. So that is uh, Lipstick Fever at number seven. And sadly, I have to put that there because obviously you can't rank them all at number one. And I do have lots of favorites from this house. And of course, as we get closer to the number one spot, those are going to be my real, real favorites. But at number six, going to one that was launched two, three years ago, Moscow Mule. So here it is uh, definitely a fresh, refreshing fragrance with a synthetic base notes. And I feel like this particular house, including the perfumer Romano Ricci, does utilize a lot of synthetic uh, molecules, synthetic notes in the base. It says that there's ambroxan. Of course, you can totally smell the ambroxan in here. There's amber tolide, uh, which is, um, uh, I think it's a musky uh, type of a synthetic note. And I'm not sure which houses uh, uh, have these, like I'm not sure if it's a Givaudan or uh, if it's a Furmanish and things like that. And then finally in the base notes, there's also norlimbanol, which is a woody musky ambery uh, synthetic note. So so those are what's in the base notes with this one. You can totally pick it up. It's definitely musky. It's lots of woodsy. And of course, the ambroxan is very, very prominent uh, in a lot of different fragrances nowadays. It gives it strength and it gives it kind of like a musky, ambery, woody, a little bit salty, uh, aquatic touch to the fragrances. I do like ambroxan. In fact, one of the fragrances coming up focuses on Cetalox, which, which is a different name for or a different uh, firm's uh, creation of ambroxan. But this one also has lots of ginger. Of course, you know, Moscow mules have ginger. It has lime, it has bergamot. So it's very, very citrusy. There are some floral touches of jasmine as well. You know, it's a nice scent. It's a definitely a fresh scent. Uh, it's musky, it's clean, it's refreshing, it's crisp. You do get that kind of a very, uh, what do you call it, the, the Moscow mule style of a uh, smell but in the end it doesn't really smell like boozy fragrances uh, if that makes sense to you guys but it's a fun one it's number six it is moscow mule from the house of juliet has a gun so at number five going to the latest fragrance from the house of juliet has a gun it's musk invisible so this is here at number five because the rest of this collection is awesome and i have ranked this it was a little tough to move things around but i've ranked it in a way that i know that this is number five and it's ranked in a way that number four is definitely number four number three is definitely number three two is definitely two and one is definitely one this is a kind of musk fragrance that's um playful for me for me it's not a true musk it doesn't smell like true musk using synthetic notes for me it mostly smells like white musk with cotton flower and uh, jasmine absolute when you smell it it's very very delicate and fluffy it's uh, almost like uh, when you ever uh, watch those commercials that use these teddy, bear, teddy bears bouncing on like uh, fluffy sheets. That's the experience I get with this one. It's just a very, very soft and uh, like, kind of like soft and just, I, oh, you almost want to squeeze it, you know? It's got this like cushiony vibe to it and very, very cloudy uh, as in you're floating in clouds. It's that kind of an experience, but it's definitely musky for sure. And it's a, it's a white musk rather than a... Um, musk that's uh you know that smells like deer musk you know this is not that kind of a smell it's just a clean smell but you know what when you smell it it's got powdery touches it also has some light or slight um almondy touches and i think that's coming from the cotton flower cotton flower does have this um almost like heliotrope is what i'm smelling in here a little bit it's it's just it's a really nice very very cozy kind of a musk I think it's a one that kind of sits close to your skin and uh, as a scent um, people have to get close to you to smell you and especially nowadays with wearing masks and things like that this might not work but for me it's a great fragrance to wear to bed those are kind of like cozy fragrances and sometimes when you wear overly strong fragrances still that are cozy to bed it might overwhelm and you might not sleep but this one definitely has this like nice coziness and it's a great bed scent and it's just a very very cozy and it's just like calming kind of a, a, a smell so that's musk invisible at number five so at number four this this was a toss-up uh you know i was gonna feature this one early like 
further up, but it's just, the rest of the fragrances are just amazing. I love this, this collection. But in the end, Sunny Side Up ended up at number four. So here's another one that smells really, really nice. Again, these uh, fragrances to me somewhat are minimalistic. You gotta be, uh, aware of that. So you're not buying fragrances from Juliet, Juliet Has a Gun, at least some of the ones I'm talking about, to actually make a statement with your perfume. perfume. Juliet Has a Gun uh, are more... Uh, perfume is not what you are all about. You're more about what you put on as clothing and your makeup, and perfume is an afterthought. You still want to smell great, but you don't want to like Perfume take over. It's your other your things want to, are taking over, and this is kind of an afterthought. And it actually just you know completes the bigger picture of how you look and your things like that. So none of the fragrances from this house, at least the ones that I'm talking about, are overwhelming. And especially this one, it's a very very cozy sandalwood. It's very very cozy. If you like the idea of sandalwood, more closer to the skin with slight coconutty touches, with slight vanilla touches, some musky ambrette touches and some floral touches and a little bit of a woodiness from ISOE Super, then this is definitely one for you to try. So if, try. If you like something like Molecule 1, um, which to me, Molecule 1 is a kind of a cedar sandalwood uh, synthetic molecule, but they're already featuring sandalwood in here. It could also be Javanol. I'm not 100% according to their uh, Juliet Has a Gun uh, website. It does say sandalwood, but there is a synthetic version of it called Javanol. But they are saying it's uh, sandalwood. But they are meshing it with ISOE Super to give it a little more of a cedar sandalwood kind of a vibe along with the coconut milk and vanilla. It's very, very cozy. It's very, very soft and creamy. And musky. there's, there's muskiness in here as well with slight floral touches. It's really, really good. Again, I'll stress this one uh, a lot. You're not getting these fragrances to, you know, wear these big fragrances. These are not those. These are fragrances that are more about subtlety, classy. There's, there's a lot of classiness with these, but this one, in, along with the Musk Invisible, definitely has these very, very cozy vibes. It's your own fragrance, you know? You wear it to your, for yourself. You smell great. You smell it off of you, but it's not going to project off of you that other people like a, a block away from you or down the hall from you are going to smell your fragrance, you know? Anyway, Sunny Side Up, a great fragrance and that's at number four. Now at number three, uh, we're gonna go with Not A Perfume and then of course Not A Perfume Super Dose. So Not A Perfume came out first and then last year Super Dose came out. I'd have a full review of Super Dose. So Not A Perfume is the most minimalistic fragrance in this collection. For me, I feel like this fragrance is so minimalistic, I would use it as a layering tool. In fact, on Juliet Has a Gun's website, they actually have a kit where you buy this fragrance and you get like four or five other 10 mLs for you to layer with. And then when you like the layering combo, obviously you can go buy a larger bottle of that other fragrance. But I feel like that's what this fragrance is. Or if you want to wear something very, very minimalistic. In the end, this features Cetalox, and Cetalox is another firm's creation of Ambroxan. So in the end, it's basically Ambroxan. This particular fragrance features Cetalox, which is basically Ambroxan, as I said. So this is very, very minimalistic, very, very minimalistic, and it blends with your uh, chemistry, and you know it'll kind of go much I just recently gave my sister a bottle of this one because she, my sister is not one of the perfume people in my family. It was my dad, my mom, and me. My brother and my sister were, are not so obsessed with perfumes. They're not into the idea of wearing perfumes a lot, especially since also my sister is a, a nurse, a registered nurse. So I gave her this one because, you know, it's very minimalistic and she doesn't want loud fragrances. And, and I thought this would be a great gift for her, especially since she said she needed some new fragrances but didn't want to wear something loud. So that's the kind of thing this would be for. You can wear a little scent, it blends with your chemistry and you might put off your own muskiness and, uh, as a smell, but it's not loud at all, intense at all, nothing like that. And you can use it as a layering tool. Now, in regards to the super dose version, and I have that tied here, and this one is the more expensive out of the fragrances. The original is 135, here it's 150. This one actually has a smell, like totally. Like it's like an overdose 
it's a super dose, but it's an overdose of that Cetalox note, like lots of it. So if you thought you can't smell this one, and a lot of people do say they can't smell it, it's just our nose being uh, anosmic. Although I can smell it out of the bottle. It smells a little bit like alcohol, yada yada, things like that. Um, but this one, there's definitely a smell. It's more uh, powdery, but like almost like dustings of wood uh, and some uh, ambery sweetness and also aquatic touches. But it's a very dusting kind of a smell, almost like powdery uh, in the end. But this one definitely also you can use as a layering tool or wear it on its own with a lot lot stronger smell. Uh, again, it mixes with your own body uh, and your own smell and it becomes this kind of a, you know, sexy uh, kind of a smell, obviously. But uh, this one is so strong that sometimes it'll clash with some fragrances. So just be warned if you have it, if you're blending it with something, blend it with something that has a very distinct smell, like a strong vanilla, because this is this will kind of like really do complement vanillas. Like uh, if a vanilla is not woody at all, it's mostly the vanilla syrup or the boozy vanilla, then you can mix it with something like this where it has that kind of a ambery, woody kind of a uh, strength to it and it'll make it a great base note uh, in addition. So it'll just not only intensify your vanilla fragrance but also kind of like change the smell up a little bit. So at number three, I've spoken a lot about these ones, not a perfume and not a perfume superdose are great, great fragrances for that minimalistic style. All right, next up, is the fragrance that was $145. This is a flanker to the original Lady Vengeance. This is Vengeance Extreme. And this is a cheaper fragrance. And this one actually I love. It's an overdose of patchouli and I like that about it. And cheaper fragrances are known for patchouli, but they're also known for labdanum. They're also known for bergamot and oak moss too. I don't think this one features labdanum or uh, Oak moss, uh, I think, uh, but they've created the smell with some other notes to smell like a classic Chypre. But the patchouli in here is really, really prominent. It really stands out. It's very green and it's very, very sexy as well. Patchouli, Bulgarian rose, vanilla, white musk, bergamot, and lavender are what's known in here or what's credited for the notes. But, you know, I do smell, uh, I do smell a little bit of uh, oak moss in here. So even though they might not mention it, they might have created an accord for it to smell like oak moss because it has that kind of classic sheep vibe to it. And also a very foamy kind of a mousse kind of a smell, you know, that like the mousse, which is, uh, I think, uh, the word for oak moss uh, in French. It has that. It's very, very fluffy again. Really, really wonderful fragrance. I really love it. This one has some strength to it. It's not as minimalistic as the other fragrances that I've spoken about so far, and I liked it about it. It has some substance. It has some strength to it, and this is not one that people are not going to smell you. And again, it's not like an over, overwhelming beast, but this one is not like the others where people have to get really close to you to smell you. There, there's definitely a trail with this one and it's very, very sexy, as I said. So that's Vengeance Extreme. Last but not least, can you guess which one it is? I've spoken about it. It's a great one. I love it. It's combining salt, fleur de sel, with a vanilla. So this is my number one favorite vanilla vibes. It's really, really delicious. I'm a vanilla fan. I love vanilla, but I like this contrast of a salty vanilla, salted vanilla, almost like salted caramel, which I'm obsessed with that, that combination. And I love the, the flavor here. It's almost like vanilla at the beach. You're, you've sprayed yourself with vanilla. You've dipped into the water. You've come off the, you know, come out of the water and there's the smell of, uh, you know, of the salt with vanilla on it. Almost like you're wearing vanilla suntan lotion and then you smell like vanilla, you dipped in, come out and it's like salty on you. That's what this, this reminds me of as a kind of a smell. So in the end, when you smell it out of the bottle, you do pick up the salty aquatic touches. So in the end, it's not like you're swimming in marine water. It's the, the smell of the fleur de sel, which is one of the main notes here. Fleur de sel is uh, salt of uh, flour, I think, but it's basically the, the, uh, the fleur de sel from the sea. Uh, so you have a smell, a little bit of a, oceanic marine kind of a smell with that salt. Lots of vanilla with this one, tonka beans, benzoin, sandalwood, brown musk, and orchid. So there's a little bit of a uh, floral touch. But you know what, in general, I don't get much flat, uh, f uh, smell or floral smell with orchids. There are a few that I've smelled that do have a light smell, but not orchids don't have a light smell. I mean, a, a strong sm smell. Almost reminding me of a non-distinct kind of a magnolia flower kind of in here. So in the end, there's some floral seed 
to it, but not an overdose of flowers. But in the end, it's so good, guys. It is really, really good. And you can actually um, experience the crystallization of the salt in here when you're wearing it. There's something like that in here that's also really, really great. Great scent, love it. Again, this is a, a great fragrance for the vanilla lover, but those of you that like vanilla and you're totally used to the vanilla that's, you know, just like nothing but vanilla, vanilla syrup, vanilla liquid, you know, vanilla for cooking, all that kind of stuff, and you want a little change, this is it right here with that little added fleur de sel smell. So that is number one, Vanilla Vibes, and that's all my fragrances that I'm featuring today for you for this video that features my top five Juliet Has a Gun fragrances. And let me know again, are you fans of this uh, particular brand, and if uh, you haven't ever sampled any fragrances from this house, now that you've watched this video, are you curious to try any of them? Which one sounds the best to you? And what do you think about the price? One thirty-five for most them and the only ones that were more expensive are 145 and this is Vengeance Extreme so it's an extreme version of the original and this is super dose it's not a perfume super dose so 145 150 uh, other than that the rest of the fragrances are 135 so let me know some uh, uh, what you think about the pricing and uh, now now that you've uh, learned about it which one sounds the best to you anyway guys thanks so much for watching today's video on my top five uh, Julia has a gun fragrances let me know if you want me to do similar videos for other niche houses top five to top ten I'm uh, looking forward to doing them myself uh, I'm, I find them very fun and a great way for you guys to discover houses that you're not too familiar with anyway again thanks so much for watching please do like this video please share it follow me on Facebook Twitter and Instagram and I'll be back with more videos very soon have a good one goodbye